But it's very exciting to get into a completely different world for me, trying to tell a story through dance, through movement, and using this, you know, very big symphonic music that I'm not used to. I use a lot of Baroque music. I've been also using classical like Wagner and things like this, but, but Tchaikovsky I never did before. And it's very difficult and it's also very inspiring. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I would have ever done Sleeping Beauty if, it's, if I wouldn't arrived here somehow. I tried and I talked to Mr. Kegelman, it's better to do something absolutely different. Don't think of Petit Pas when you look at my choreography because it's got nothing to do with it. There is not one step. I am a choreographer. I am not somebody who reconstructs ballets. I also respect enormously Marius Petipa's work and I would not borrow any of his steps. I wouldn't put my dirty hands in his beautiful work, you know. I know many people does, I mean everybody does, but um, I, I wouldn't dare to do that. I prefer to do something absolutely different. It's a shame he's not alive and I cannot talk to him, or I, Tchaikovsky is not alive and I cannot sort of say to him, can you give me an advice, do you think I should do it or not? Do you mind if I would order instead of this, will do that? Or, but I am somebody who loves music, who respects very much composers and musicians and artists. And I hope I won't deserve, or I hope that I will deserve to do this piece, know that Tchaikovsky, if he sees my body, he won't move in his grave. <laughs> I try to follow the music and I and get inspired by the sounds of the music and when, when there is aurora variation then I try to, to make aurora dance. When there is the variation from Carabos then I put Carabos on stage moving and, and expressing what the music says. And that's, all, that's what a choreographer is about, you know. Trying to express through movement what the choreography is saying, especially when it is a ballet written, a, a music written for ballet, you know. I try to get rid of all the theatrical moments that are for me are so long. All the mime, you know, all these things and all these things that is beautiful for the classical version. But right now, I cannot be five minutes just with dancers on stage doing sort of mime, sort of theater. I don't know what it is, this for me. So I try to do that, all that with dance. There is not mime in my, in my ballet. Maybe that's the most different thing. Still Petit Pa, when he did uh, Sleeping Beauty, he tried to take away as much as possible all this theater and these mime parts in the ballets. And he tried to show more technique from class, and that's why Sleeping Beauty is a lot of you know, technique. And less, less mime. But 100 years later, it's still for me, it's too much mime, too much theater. They are very nice, they are very nice to work with. I think they, they are very good at what they do, but a dancer can't always just be learning. You can't only live off doing things that they've been already done, you know? They always learn things from other choreographers. Mostly they are not alive anymore. So they need to grow as an artist, also as persons, to do new things, new productions that are made on them. You know, sometimes I give them a step, um, uh, sort of like their own version, and they say, no, please, we want to do something completely new. So I feel them very happy to have somebody who is making steps on them. You know, it's like making a jacket by measure, not just bought in a boutique. The public is going to like it because dances are good, because we do it really Honestly, we don't do it f to have a big success. We don't do it to go against anybody or to make a big scandal, at least me. Which is work because if it happened now I'm here and I'm in a great theater with beautiful dancers, let's do something new. So I think it would be frustrated for the audience if they come to see Sleeping Beauty and it's the same thing. I have to do something different. <laughs>